Hi, my name is uh, Arthur Ensley, and I'm a research scientist at the Michigan Tech Research Institute. Today I'm going to talk about my research in applying data mining, information retrieval, and natural language processing techniques to Twitter data for the purpose of mapping prescribed and wildland fires in near real time. We can first considered the fact that there's a, quite a lot of fire communication uh, happening on Twitter. You have state and local officials, federal officials talking about fires as they are happening in real time as a means of reporting on the status of fires to the general public, sometimes as part of an explicit reporting obligation, and then also in general to, because of a desire to keep the public informed. There's also members of the public themselves that tweet or retweet about the status of fires um, as they are uh, occurring, um, as they are are contained by uh, fire management officials and we wanted to somehow capture the data that uh, we that's implicit in these conversations about fire uh, as a means of locating fires um, and then further uh, spreading word about them uh, also trying to capture some metrics about the fires such as the acreage burned uh, the type of fires and the proportion of such fires uh, throughout the year through any period of interest or, or spatial area of interest as well so we looked at, uh, again, the Twitter platform. For those that aren't familiar with it, it's a social networking platform uh, for so-called microblogging. It consists of very short messages, 140 characters or less. And it turns out that less than 1% of tweets pretty much are explicitly geotagged. That is that they have uh, coordinates embedded in, in the uh, metadata that associate that tweet with some place on the Earth. This embedding usually comes from uh, mobile devices, uh, other course acquisitions of locations. Um, so it's not really, um, since less than 1% of them are, are so explicitly geotagged, uh, in order to map these fires and, and uh, figure out where on the earth that they're located, we actually have to take a different approach. And we use um, a technique called geocoding. The classic example of geocoding is you have a list of postal addresses and you want to figure out where uh, in a geographic space these people live, where on the globe that they live. Um, and so there are techniques for doing that. Our, our approach uses something called name entity recognition. Uh, it comes from natural language processing and information retrieval. We basically scan the text of a tweet to find tokens or words that we believe have some geographic significance. Then we look these tokens up in a geographic gazette. We do this for any of the tokens in the tweet that we think uh, have geographic significance. If we get multiple retrievals from our database, we use k-means clustering to identify what we think are the tightest clusters of these returns, and then we assign that the centroid of that cluster as the location of our uh, geocoded tweet. Um, the desire is to do this in bulk, uh, to have this automated in real again in near real time so that we can do this as quickly as possible. As soon as a fire incident is talked about on Twitter, we can pull it down, process it, and put it somewhere uh, on the globe. That's our goal. Um, there are some other considerations that come into play here, such as removing retweets, that is, um, tweets that somebody else has already written that somebody just copies and sends along. We want to try and limit, limit duplicate reports as much as possible. Um, so far, our results are um, moderate in the geocoding. Our re retweet detection has been exceptional. But we really didn't uh, we really didn't use the best geocoder for this, the, the best um, geographic gazette for this effort. Uh, we know um, we're confident that it can be improved by using a larger uh, geographic gazette, uh, and that's actually what we're working on right now. This was uh, internal funded research uh, by the Michigan Tech Research Institute. Um, and again, it's ongoing with the ultimate goal being uh, to compare these results and this methodology as a means of detecting fire to currently established methods uh, that generally come from satellite remote sensing. Thank you.